I'm starving for a new Spatana. It's been six months without our Lord and Savior, the Spatana. And no second kit for the Spatana Stamper for a year and three months. Nintendo, what are you waiting for? Give us the new Spatana Stamp. What? They did it? Woo! Yeah, that's what I've been waiting for. We are so back and my name is Dev and today I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about the Neo Spatana Stamper. I'll be covering the abilities, the basics, how to play the weapon, and teach you some tips and tricks. Okay, what gear abilities do we run for the Neo Spatana Stamper? For the utility subs which require 1 to 2 subs of these abilities. So these abilities are quick super jump and ink resistance which are essential for every weapon in my opinion. Super Jump helps you get back into battle quicker and Ink Resistance helps get out of enemy ink easier and lets you fight in it for a few frames. And for the other utility sub abilities, I recommend Special Saver, Swim Speed, Ink Saver Main, Ink Recovery Up, and Special Charge Up. Okay, for the main abilities, you can run Swim Speed. I don't know, going fast just feels good on this weapon. Comeback is amazing for this weapon since you'll be dying a decent amount and when you do, you get a main of Ink Saver Main, Ink Saver Sub, Ink Recovery Up, Swim Speed Up, Run Speed Up, and Special Charge Up, all for 20 seconds. Which are all amazing abilities to have. And here are the abilities you should never run. Please don't run these abilities, I never want to see a Respawn Punisher Stamper and Zelda Q- STOP! Okay, for our last ability it's Stealth Jump, which is just perfect on this weapon since you'll be jumping into battle and this ability hides your landing marker if the enemy is far away. No, enemies can still see your super jump landing, but they have to be very close to see it. Anyway, this is the gear set I run for Neo Stamper. And here are gear sets you can run from top level players. Okay, now onto the basics. Neo Spatana Stamper is a midweight Spatana that can fire huge projectiles of ink. As with every Spatana, this weapon has horizontal and vertical slashes. Horizontal slashes from a distance can do 35 damage, making this a 3 shot. This attack is very slow, but it can be useful to get easy damage to help combo with your teammates. If you are closer to an opponent, a horizontal swing will do 55 damage, making this a 2 shot, which can be a bit useful when an opponent is way too close to you. Next we got a charge slash, which has more range and does more damage. The vertical slash from a distance does 70 damage, making this a 2 shot. And for the vertical, charge close up does 140 damage, making this a 1 shot. Also, if you move the left stick forward and charge the Spatana, you'll lunge forward. This could be great to give yourself extra distance and can be a moving tool as well. How to play the weapon. Neo Spatana Stamper is a unique weapon. It's a midline slayer weapon that can supply lots of paint for its team and give itself special. And that's Crab Tank, which is super useful for being a turret with armor that gets kills. Move the enemies. And just a great entry tool in general. For this weapon sub, it's Toxic Mist. Which, yeah, it isn't the greatest sub, but it's not useless. Especially with two already strong pieces to this kit. Anyway, Toximus is a good sub for trapping the enemies, and it's especially useful in 2v1 fights to help support your teammates. I'll give more tips about the whole kit in a later segment. So when playing this weapon, you're going to be trying to hunt down many enemies and distract them from the objective, so your teammates have an easier time completing the objective on all modes. And things you should be doing is sharking to sneak up on an enemy and get an easy kill. Join and fight to make it a 2v1 against an enemy. And you can do this by throwing slashes or trapping an enemy in Toxic Mist. Both Spatanas have insane object damage with the new Spatana Stamper having amazing object damage in this game. So when fighting against the enemy team, you can help destroy Booyah Bombs, Crab Tanks, Tenebrella Shields, Splash Walls, and many more for your teammates. Okay, now for some tips and tricks. For the sub, it's Toxic Mist. You can abuse the terrain on some maps, like for example, you can throw Toxic Mist at a wall and if the wall is thin, it can reach the other side, which can trap and drain the enemy's ink. Use Toxic Mist against ink hungry weapons like E-Leaders, Batana Stamper, Tenabrella, and many more. Also, Toxic Mist is very good against dually users since dodge rolls can consume a decent amount of ink and if a dually rolls into a Toxic Mist, then their ink tank is going to drain a lot. Blocking paths can be useful to limit the opponent's approach options like hallways or rainmaker paths. Throw a toxic mist for your teammates. If you see your teammate fighting and you can't throw a slash, then throw a toxic mist to slow down and drink the enemy's ink tank to make the fight easier for your teammate. Use toxic mist against the rainmaker and power climb carries since they are for sure the enemies you want to slow down and help your teammates get a kill on. 
And this sub really does help against the Rainmaker carrier since Rainmaker already slows down the swim and run speed for the carrier, so with including Toxic Mist, this can slow down the carrier even more. When using your crab tank, throw a Toxic Mist to trap the enemy and give yourself a free ink refill. That's all I got for Toxic Mist. I recommend checking out Pika Dave's guide on Toxic Mist. Pika does a way better job than I do on explaining Mist. Link to the guide will be in the description. Now onto the special crab tank, baby! Enough of me getting excited for finally having a top tier special on Ace Platana. Now let's go on to some tips and tricks for crab tank. Strengths. For the firing mode, use it when the enemy is in plain sight since the firing mode is extremely fast and has great range and for the expulsion shot should be used to finish a kill or to poke an enemy out of cover. Try to find positions to use your crab tank since this isn't just a special you pop out and let the special do the work. <laughs> no 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 no. This is a special where you have to position yourself and since this Platana Stamper is going to spend its time in mid, you can find great options to use your crab on the map like high ground or platforms to make yourself a hard target to take down. Use crab as an entry tool since the enemy has to hide and avoid you or try to take you down which can be great for your team to make a push. For ball mode it should be used to protect yourself and if the enemy has a weapon with not so great object damage then try and go for a kill with ball mode since it only takes 3 hits to do. And if your crab tank breaks, then try to go for a horizontal slash for a quick option and get a potential kill. Use crabs against objects since crab tanks do a good job at shredding booyah bombs, wave breakers, rainmaker barriers, and against other crab tanks. To win against other crab tanks, fire first and you'll win the fight. Unless the opponent has object shredder equipped, then you're for sure losing. Jump and charge slash to paint the map for your special since that is a special you actually want to get a lot of and has no cooldown. Weaknesses. Here's something you need to watch out for since Craft Tank as of now has so many counters. For many weapons I would look out for splat links like Nautilus, Heavy Edit, and Ballpoint due to having fast DPS and great object damage which can shred your Craft Tank fast and from a distance. Next look out for all Splatana since they can shred crab fast due to the great range, high object damage, and if you aren't careful enough, one shot you from behind. Chargers can be threatening since they're already hiding behind cover and most Charger and E-Leader players most likely run object shredder, so you can kiss your Craft Tank goodbye. And last for main weapons, look out for AoE weapons like Slosher, tri Slosher, Machine Blaster, Range Blaster, and Rapid Blaster. Since these weapons have good range and can poke over your crab and force you into ball mode. As for subs, you want to look out for bombs like Fizzy Bomb, Splat Bomb, Suction Bomb, and Auto Bomb since they can do great object damage and if you're hit from behind and not in ball mode, you'll get one-shotted. Also be careful around your teammates since if a bomb is thrown at a crab tank, it will instantly explode and teammates will instantly die when right next to a crab tank, so please stay away from teammates and teammates stay away from crab tank. Okay, now for specials. You want to stay away from Trizuka since it only takes 2 shots to break a crab and 1 shot if they have object shredder equipped. Inkjet since it can also 2 shot with direct hits. Kraken is invincible so a crab tank does nothing against it and a Kraken can pierce through your armor killing you and the crab tank. Triple Ink Strikes can be very threatening since it only takes 2 strikes to break the crab and most likely kill you. Killer Whales can force you in ball mode and still kill you even through armor. And last is an actual Ultra Stamp W thanks to the throw mode one shotting. And if you're lucky enough to get close then rush mode can kill and break the crab really easily. I know I pointed out so many weaknesses to look out for but don't let that scare you from using crab tank since this special is extremely strong and for sure a top 5 special. And just to make you feel better, use Reef Slider and find all the weaknesses for that. Okay, enough of the sub and special, let's get on to the other stuff. Main strafing. This technique can help confuse your opponent and annoy your opponent on where you're going while doing lots of damage. When going for a critical hit, I recommend doing it with Sharking, going for an easy kill from behind, when an enemy is climbing a wall, when you're in a 1v1 fight and your opponent has a weapon with the slow kill time, and for sure do it when an opponent is super jumping, but beware of Drop Roller or Dualies. It requires precise timing to get a kill, when an opponent has drop roller equipped. When charge slashing, you can still hit the enemy at the side of you, even if you're going forward. And all you have to do is charge slash dash and flick the camera to the side of the enemy. And boom, there you go. Go for horizontal to vertical slash combos. Since this is a giant hitbox that's hard to avoid and can get a lot of kills from a distance, but make sure to mix up your slashes so you aren't predictable. Camping under ledges is so useful since the sample vertical hits are very narrow, you can poke your opponent with slashes and if your opponent gets too close to a ledge, you can get an easy kill. And that's all I got for Neo's Platana Stamper, and man, what a guide. I hope this guide helped, since this weapon is still pretty new, so I did my best to get everything. Before I go, I want to thank you for an amazing year. We hit 254 subscribers as of this recording, 
and I didn't think this was possible for someone like me, but I'm super grateful for it. And I plan to make a guide on what abilities to run on all Spatanas, and future guides on a new Spatana and possible third kits for the Spatanas. Yes, I'm really milking Spatanas this much. Anyway, I hope you all had a great year, and as usual, Say the line, Clark. Nintendo, give third Spatana kits. Okay, bye.